Now I'm going to show you how to do some basic formatting in C++. And I do that along an example of a billing receipt with two items, calculating the tax and then showing the total. So let's start out by creating a constant float tax rate. This represents our tax rate. 1.0 would be 100%, and in this case, I'm just going to use 9.75%. Then I create a couple of items, and I define variables for those two items, price 1, and I'm just going to pick $12.50, and for the second, price 9.5.95. Next, I want to compute the subtotal then the tax, and then the total, which is the tax applied. So for the total, for the subtotal, this will be price 1 plus price 2. Now I want to compute the tax, and so I do tax subtotal multiplied by the tax rate. And next, the total will be the subtotal plus the tax on top. And all these things I want to output. So I output first the first item, which is price 1. Then I want to output the second item, price 2. And then I want to output the tax. And finally, the total. Now, if I run this, we can see that first of all, all the amounts are not properly represented. Like for example, 12.5, we probably want to show .50 for 50 cents. Or for the tax, we don't want to show 1.79887. We, we always want to limit it to two digits after the decimal point. The other thing that we later want to do is we want to properly align all the colons and we want to properly align all the decimal points. So let's start out by showing two digits after the decimal point. There is a property that we can set by calling set precision and fixed and show point. So what this does is it says we want to limit the precision to two digits, that we only want to show two digits. The fixed will make it that it the two digits apply after the decimal point, so that we always show 95, for example. Or here we limit or round up to two, two digits after the decimal point. And the show point uh, causes it to show trailing zeros. So for example, 12.5 would result in 12.50. So it will show the trailing zeros for the two digits after the decimal point. Now again, to re reiterate, if we have only set precision, it will only show two digits. And this could be two digits before the decimal point, or before and after, or after. Um, if it's before, it uses scientific notation. So in this case, we want to have we want to apply these two digits after the decimal point, so we use the fix modifier here. And then show point, we want to show trailing zero. If we have an even number, for example, 3, we still want to show 3.00. So let's run this again and see what we get. Oh, one thing I forgot. You can see the error here use of undeclared identifier. So in order to use these formatting um, operators and functions, we need to include IO, mani IO manipulation. So let's run this. And now we can see everything has exactly two digits after the decimal point, And this nicely represents a dollar amount. So let's do next, um, as a next step, align the colon here. So the colon we can easily align since this is in strings. And whatever is in double quotes, we can align and hard code in our 
program. So I can just space this out so that the quotes are all aligned. That, that is always a good idea for doing with strings because strings we know exactly how wide they are. It's literally what we put in the code. So if I run this, now we can see this is all properly aligned. The next thing is we want to align the decimal point. Now what we cannot do, we cannot say the second price is less, so we space this one over, because this, this is just uh, empty space in the code. It would just be ignored if we do it. Um, and even if, we wouldn't want to do it because we don't know ahead of time what value is stored in the variable. Maybe the price two could be $100. Um, so, so we don't really know uh, how many digits are before and how many are after. Probably in, in this case, we really don't know how many digits are before. So it could be very based on the value. So what we want to do in this case, we want to preserve some space where we plug in the numbers. Um, so we want to, for example, say, let's say we expect the largest value to be 100. Everything is less than 1,000. So the, the longest would be three digits before the decimal point, two digits after the decimal point, and including the decimal point. So let's say we expect the largest number to be $999.99. Then we would have two digits after the decimal point, the decimal point itself, which would be three spaces or three characters, and then three spaces or three digits before for 999. So altogether would be six digits or six digits or six characters in total that we wanna preserve. So we do set w six. This will reserve a width of six characters. And when we then output our price, it will plug it into the reserved space here. So we do this with each of these. So we output here the, the string item one colon space. Then we reserve a width of six characters. And into that, we immediately, whatever follows, we plug it in. So in this case, the value that is stored in price one. Now next line again, we output the string here which we already aligned. Then we reserve six spaces of six character, a width of six characters, if you will, and then we plug in the price. Next, we do it for the text as well. Reserve six spaces, and here uh, for the total as well, six spaces. And now let's run this again. And you can see everything is properly aligned. What we could do also is, if, if we have, for example, if we have additional formatting that we have to do, we could space this out, that everything looks nicely aligned here. And then if we have strings, we can align the quotes here again. So if there's maybe the price times three, we have that item is three times, the next item we have five times. We could put in something like space, times and then we use set w again for the next variable for the for the count so to recap set precision fixed show point is to limit the number of digits after the decimal point and show trailing zeros whenever we have a string literal we can just space it and align it in our code like here or here and set w we always use when we deal with variables. In variables, we don't know what is stored in the variable. We don't know how, how large or how small the value is. And the width that we reserve really depends on what do we expect. Um, what would be the largest value? That's how much space we want to reserve. We probably don't want to reserve space for a trillion dollars here for somebody who just buys a couple items. So in this case, we limit it to 1000. Um, I hope this kind of gives you some basic understanding of how to do proper formatting in C++ and thank you for watching.